All right, all right, all right. Well, the long weekend is over, and now it's back to work. Now, I realize that in this business, you're only as good as your last profitable call. So I know I got to stay out there, and I got to keep giving you people these gems. Uh, and that means, you know, you got to be a competitor. You got to be out there constantly pushing yourself to be your best and to uncover, you know, what the next great trade is. So let's just go over right now what is happening today, the start of a new week. You know, we've come back from vacation. Uh, first thing uh, that I see, British pound down sharply to new 30-year lows. Now, I said that would probably happen. I wrote that in the MMT trader report that I sent out yesterday. Okay, I am not overly concerned with this. I will tell you that I think th this is a strategy. This is by design of the Bank of England. You, last week, Mark Carney, the uh, Bank of England governor, you know, he already started to make comments which had a bearish impact on the pound. I guess in his mind, you know, he wants to see the pound lower. For what reason? I have no idea. I can tell you what is going to happen following any policy decision, but I am not inside of a person's head. Anyway, the pound is down. That is a reality. And as a trader, you have to deal with realities. Okay? So, it's clear that the Bank of England wants the pound down. Now, the other thing that the Bank of England said today is that they were going to loosen capital requirements for commercial banks. Uh, and, of course, you know, that's the real way that banks lend. They don't, they don't lend their reserves, okay? There's this gross misconception, even among uh, the top mainstream economists, that banks lend their reserves, some kind of a Jimmy Stewart, it's a wonderful life type of thing, Bailey's building and loan. That's not the way it works. But they are, so they're not lending constrained by their reserves, but they are lending constrained by their capital. So loosening capital reserves, uh, loosening capital requirements uh, will allow the banks to lend more. Now, what is the impact of this on the pound? Not much, really. I mean, uh, greater bank lending uh, does not equate to any net creation of British pound financial assets, right? So nothing really changes. I mean, maybe you get a bump up in loan creation, and I think this goes into effect next year, so it's not even right now. So you get a bump up in loan creation. What does that mean? Is the government, you know, at least the position of the central bank to try to get people to borrow more, get banks to lend more? So it's, it's basically a zero-sum thing, you know. The banks make a loan, people get a deposit, but they also get a liability that they have to pay back. So this, this should be no real impact on the pound uh, beyond let's say an impact if greater lending causes a boost in economic activity at least a temporary boost in economic activity we don't know it could be you know next year so they sold the pound again you see how the market reacts to this you see how people very uninformed right away they just assume this is a negative and they bash the pound down so you really have to be looking for a level in here to to buy it uh, as you know Last Monday, we bought the pound at 131.95. A lot of you got out at 134, 135, which is fantastic. Now, I held that position, and that is still a position on the books of MMT traders. So we're going to add another unit at some level down here. I don't think uh, I'm ready to add at the this particular moment, uh, but soon, looking for some... Uh, indication here that the market is getting real emotional with this British pound. Okay, so much for the pound, so much for the Bank of England for now. The other thing that's going on is the cockroaches are out. The cockroaches are out today. So stocks are down. They were down overnight. Futures are down. And I'm sure 
you know, everybody, all the cockroaches are going to be saying, this is it. This is the top. Last week was not the top, but this is the top. This is really the top. Believe us. So I will be looking for a place to buy S&Ps on this dip uh, probably sometime today, I, I would imagine. But we'll see. Uh, again, I track the emotion. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. Get my Forex course. I'll tell you how. Uh, but I, I look a lot at volume. Volume to me is a great indicator of emotion. Volume expresses urgency. So I'm a, I'm a very uh, heavy user of volume as an indicator. And, you know, not in the sense that you think. When you hear people say, oh, the market's going up on volume. That's not, that's not how I do it. And that doesn't tell you anything. The way I do it tells you something. So anyway, that's my first update for today. All right, stay calm, everybody. If you're still along the British Pound, stay calm. I'm going to take care of you. And by the way, this is a great thing that is happening, and let me tell you why. When you have a central bank, you see, normally I would say to people, don't, you don't fight a central bank. They're a monopolist, okay? But every once in a while, and it may be through no fault of your own, you might get caught in a position, and then all of a sudden, unpredictably, a central bank comes out and does something. And now... It's kind of like you went out there on a sailboat on a nice, beautiful day, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this tempest comes along, this storm comes along, and you're, you're being tossed around by the waves. You've got you to gotta know how to deal with a situation like that. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's say we got caught. Hey, I'm long the British pound. Woo! Oh, my God. Now Carney's pushing it down. I'm going to show you how to deal with a situation like that. The best offense is a great impenetrable defense. If you know how to get yourself out of the worst possible situation, how easy does it become to make money? Very easy. Very easy. See you later. Bye.